Leslie Headland's The Eclat, Episode 4, has finally premiered, and in it we learn basically nothing, as it was all seemingly a setup for a cliffhanger that is far less interesting than the comedy that will surely ensue from the trash compactor that is the internet finally collapsing in on this garbage for the world to see. And on that note, let's enjoy some of that comedy from our friends from around the That Park Place Network here on T3 PM. Hello folks, welcome back. And what in the ever-loving world did I just have to watch? I am going to fight Chris Gore. Chris Gore, you hear me. You hear me out there, Chris Gore. We're going to have a fight. You told me this would not be as bad as episode three. This is the worst episode in the Acolyte, and I want, to, I want to put a little star by it, a little asterisk, okay? It doesn't retcon the original movies. It doesn't change canon in the same way. But in terms of the quality of an episode, gentlemen, what kind of hot garbage did we just watch? We literally sat and watched a gopher dog man sniff his way to a dead Wookiee. <laughs> I'm not sure. Where, I'm not sure if the gopher can be classified as a man or not. I, I it cannot. It's a they them. I I yep. I have never seen. I have never seen any show. No matter how woke it has been, I have never seen any show make a scene like literally an entire scene, and its only purpose is to use a pronoun in the most obvious, like, Saturday morning cartoon, Scooby-Doo just found a clue kind of way of, we've done this now for 90 seconds, and here's the payoff. I said a plural pronoun for the gopher dog. And they Hot. didn't do it just once. They did it. Garbage. Good grief, John. What did we just watch? This is a new low. <laughs> Gosh, that was, was bad. It, it was it was bad, but I will say, like, there was actually one thing that did, like, there was one positive for me. Okay. Um, that, was, that was yours advice to OSHA. I actually thought that was, like, actually, like, legitimately well-written, something you would expect from Star Wars, but everything else was just trash, absolute trash. Oh, my gosh. Um, the idea that you would write an episode where your main two characters look and act the same, and both of them are given a side character to go on the quest with them, and both of the side characters are just exposition sponges. I mean, yeah. you talk about terrible writing. You th Throw away the idea of uh, show it, don't explain it. Everything in this episode was explained, and there was one shot in particular, John, where we were watching it, and I swear I thought if a, if a dwarf with a battle axe comes out of the background right now, it's going to look more like it fits in this scene than Star Wars. If an elf comes out with a bow and arrow, I'm going to feel like I'm in, in that world better. This was this was bizarre. This was a long trek with very little uh, in it. And from a writing standpoint, this has got to be the worst. I will also say, John, that there were times when, I hate to say this, there were times when it was difficult to understand the dialogue. Uh, Lee jung -Jae, I, turned, I turned the list, captions off. <laughs> yeah, but without the captions, it, it was tough sometimes. He learned English for this role. He is to be commended. He's he's given it all he's got, but my gosh, my gosh, what what an awful, awful piece of trash episode. I think it's worse than episode three, not in terms of destroying Star Wars, but in terms of just like as as a piece of entertainment, this this could have come from a five year old. And uh, nepotism is what we call the character who's painted in green makeup, who is Leslie Headland's uh, wife. Well, oh my gosh, you talk about some overacting. I mean, this is this is just terrible stuff. Uh, X-Wing, welcome to the show again, X-Wing, the after party. My friend, I'm saying that this is worse than episode three. I'm not saying that it's worse in terms of destroying Star Wars. Episode three was, I mean, I don't know how you can, I mean, that was urinating on the corpse of it. But X-Wing, this was worse in terms of writing. This was the product of a four-year-old in every way. I love watching somebody get to spend 20 million in Star Wars for what I could have done for probably about five grand. <laughs> so I, I don't see Absolutely. Really <clears throat> Would you call this a filler episode? Did nothing happen in it or it has a giant cliffhanger at the end and that's it. Yeah. yeah it's it almost doesn't warrant the discussion. last two minutes are literally the only point of the episode. Yeah. You could skip the entire rest of the episode. There's no yeah. point in it. What, you learn nothing new, by the way. What, there's not a single on? there's not a single thing that we learn in the entire episode. It's garbage. 
they're trying to act like they're subtle, but they're as subtle as a herd of elephants as to who the Sith is. They're making it painfully obvious. We all know exactly who it is. Like, what kind of, oh, I'm a bumbling idiot. <laughs> like, I'm sure it's not that guy. It's literally sure. the Jar Jar meme. They've literally taken the yeah. Jar Jar meme and made it real. It's like, it's, it's like a, a fart in an elevator with one person <laughs> in it. Like, nobody's oh, confused the about character. what just happened. And then they put Joe Biden in there. Luckily, that thing was just sniffing all over the place. <laughs> <sighs> that, that's got to be the, the dumbest thing. X-Wing, have you ever seen a show? Have you ever seen a show? John's having a good laugh at Joe, at Joe Biden running through the jungles of <laughs> World of Warcraft. X-Wing, have you ever seen a show that actually spends an entire scene and the scene's only purpose? The only purpose is to use a pronoun to shock the audience. Do you ever see anything like this? Not even Doctor Who's this bad. They do it's, this in Marvel Comics now. Sorry, it's, I, it's, I know it's right, but... No, I get no, the comics I, though. I don't, right? I don't even know what to say. Like it's it's so crappy, it almost doesn't warrant talking about. That's kind of where my brain's at. Like why? I, I know we have to talk about it, but it's like there's there's nothing of substance here. They're like, oh well, we got a beaver. Is he or they? <laughs> oh, it's, oh my god, dude. Lorena, you've seen the episode. I'm sorry for that. I hope you are not too heavily victimized. Tell us what you thought of it. Um, one, I really should not have watched it without wine. Um, <laughs> no, I don't I know. This, made it better. Oh, oh, Lord. This is this is just awful TV, awful mm-hmm. television, period. I mean, it's a given. It's awful Star Wars, but just awful, awful TV. I do not care about any of these characters except for Master Soul, and that's because that's played by uh, Jay Jung Lee, and I feel so bad for him to just be in this absolute just dog crap um, of a show. Lorena, are you telling really... me you don't like it when characters suddenly switch their allegiance for no given reason out of the blue and talk about it for five minutes and we're just, you, you didn't enjoy bad twin suddenly deciding to join good side no reason no i didn't enjoy bad twin being described as there is good in her Mm -hmm. i said did you really just freaking go there and and i'm a normie okay so i immediately picked up on that i'm like that's what you're gonna do it it was it was just ridiculous i I don't i don't care about these characters the last okay. time we, the last time these characters were around Bad Twin, she was literally trying to murder her sister for no given reason, and maybe killed everyone in her little coven. So clearly, there's some good in her. Clearly, they would say that. Yeah, the fact that people didn't know she was a pyromaniac, I, I don't, I don't buy that. The justification right. is magnificent too. Uh, you know, I'm going to turn myself in, and they said they'll put you in. You know, they'll lock you up. And she goes, "Not if I tell them who the, you know, the Sith is." You just killed two Jedi. You think <laughs> if you give a name, you're just going to be like good to go? Everything's well, kosher now. Remember also that Soul used brain suck or vacuum suck and discovered that she doesn't know who the, the identity of the Sith is, anyways. All right. Speaking of uh, just how bad this was, Michelle, what what did we just watch? Two things I will say that I funny. It's been addressed now since I've been on in this short time. Uh, what what you just said? Okay, so we have eight episodes of something. How? I, I mean, we know how. I mean, it's the same. It's the same reason how we get the crap where you're just talking about in the dialogue that we're getting in the show that is so bad. But uh, how in eight episodes? This episode was like twenty eight minutes. How can you not come up with a compelling story? I I know I always go to it because I love Stranger Things, but even in the setup episodes of Stranger Things, you're interested. Like it's going somewhere. Something's happening. Like as far as with the characters and the story that's being built, like in this, like very little actually happened in this episode. And I and by did did it bother you that the Wookiee's already dead? Did when when not when not Chewbacca died off screen again? Did it did did you shed a tear? Did you care? I didn't even notice he could died. You thought he was just when, taking when a snooze? When did that happen? Like they kind I, of, I noticed like the kind of the sad music and he kind of walked off. Like who killed him? He's in the chair. He has a slash mark. And then May comes in and says that, sees it and and says like, oh, my master's already here. And then she like hides if in the only, I show up. If only she had walked in, taken a sniff and be like, smells like burnt dog hair. I would have said, okay. I'm back on board with this. All right, uh, Michelle, I want to I want to keep coming back to you on what you think of this. Let's bring in Jonas uh, quickly to join the panel. Uh, Jonas, uh, sorry to have made you watch this. 
but you're here with us now. <laughs> Michelle, continue on, please, with your thoughts on episode four. Yeah, and then the other thing, Lorena's already hit on it. Can, can people who have murdered get redeemed? Absolutely, I believe that. That's happened many times in life. But does someone murder two people and like the next day be like, you know what, I tried that murder thing. I don't really think it's for me. And I'm going to be good now. Like that, that's just not how life worked. <laughs> she did the Forrest Gump. I'm pretty tired. I think yeah. I'll go home now. Yeah. That is perfect. That's it. <laughs> she it turned and said, so I think so I'm going to be good now. <laughs> I just wanted to point out a comment from Eco3. Let us not forget that Darth Vader died. His redemption works because of sacrifice. And that's absolutely yeah. right. Right. Have you ever seen any show where the bad guy or bad girl suddenly turns to being a good character just instantly with nothing preceding it? It just happens. Have you ever seen that before? Heroes. And, and this By one the way, right here, she's a person who may or may not have killed more than a dozen people. At least two was an attempted, if not a, a murder, then an assisted self-deletion. And now she's like, you know what? I've decided I've had enough of this. Finding out my sister is alive means I'm going to turn my back on this guy who had no reason to come with me. I had no reason to trap him. I'm going to I'm going to go turn myself in. But first, I'm going to visit the guy who I'm supposed to murder. Jonas. That's exactly. She, she, she was young. It was a phase. <laughs> also why she, she went in the jungle and had a zarg nut and changed her mind also he or they who is he or they supposed to be tracking is it supposed to be kelnaka or is it supposed to be may and whose underwear is it no, that he's sniffing no one really knows we don't even know what uh, dollar store rocket is sniffing out or how he would know what the smell is right? uh, so you know we do actually have a continuity or a cannon break in the show kiati mundi being there and he would look to be at that time maybe 30s something like that. So the males, the uh, Syrian males age twice as fast as Syrian females. And if this show is 100 years before The Phantom Menace, The Clone Wars, everything, he would be at that time, you know, 130, 150. But Syrian lifespans are actually almost shorter than human lifespans. So by the time you're 65, you're a senior, you're a senior as a Syrian. So a young Kiati Mundi in the show kind of breaks that continuity hard so it's not it's definitely kiati mundi and not he's some... listed in the credits oh. as kiati mundi i just thought no. they were doing another character and not coming nope. up with a new that characterization. Is straight up kiati mundi oh my uh let me pull this up folks for everybody to see and there we have it so kiati uh, mundi uh, marvin the movie monster is here with us marvin welcome aboard sir <sighs> i just uh, i marvin it, have I, you seen it yeah do you think it was worse than episode three? I think this episode is worse than anything I've ever seen before in my life ever. Um, <laughs> I do too. It was it, so um, bad. I would rather I've, watch I've, Willow I've in seen, reverse with my eyes scotch taped open. This it, it there's not one character motivation that makes sense. They established this creepy, creepy relationship between Padawan Chitara there and and Oshley. Can can because, we take a moment, Marvin, to mock the little spots they have painted on her arm with makeup? Oh, can we all boy. please mock that? I didn't even notice it during the show. Everyone, take a look at the Chitara spots. That's that's terrible. That's, that's, it, she that's is terrible. she is Chitara. She's Chitara from the day. And I've started now referring to the twins as Mary Kate and Oshley. <laughs> okay, that's darn it. That might be better than what we've got. <laughs> By the way, uh, um, the character here with the blonde hair, Dwight Schrute Chitara, uh, she is portrayed as if she's like 13, but she has these heart to hearts with Good Twin. And she's also portrayed as being teeny weeny tiny. And then when they put Good Twin next to her and, and Good Twin is smaller, it throws everything off. Like it just continually she's, makes me go, I don't understand what's happening here. Cause in this right here, Good Twin looks like she's 12 next to Dwight Schrute Chitara. Oh, I mean, haircut. she's 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 flirting with her. Yeah. Yeah. This did is anyone, did anyone else this catch thing. that? All of a sudden, oh, yeah, I did. Their sisters or their best friends, or maybe they're doing a romance thing because Leslie Headland only has one note and she wants to play it over and over again. Well, I'm, I, I'm confused. Isn't isn't Dwight Schrute Chitara supposed to be like 13? Yes. Okay, so how is she having a relationship or being flirted with by good twin who should be like a battle-hardened 24-year-old, except in this scene here, she looks like she's 12. What the heck is because going on in this terribly written show? It's created by Leslie Headland. That's all you have to know. All right, folks, it's Valiant Renegade joining us. Uh, Valiant, you've suffered through episode four. 
Marvin says it's the worst thing he's ever watched in his life. Um, I found it to be absolutely atrocious. Worse than episode three. Did not destroy canon, but I've never seen anything so boring and so mind-numbingly stupid. Share with us your thoughts about uh, how it could possibly get worse than this. Well, uh, face says it all. I don't know what I just watched. (laughs) I don't know what that was, but it was terrible. And I'm so glad I have the Disney Plus through Spectrum that's quote unquote free because I got to watch the commercials, which were the best part of the show. Honestly, the thing I enjoyed about uh, enjoyed the most about Acolyte Episode Four was watching Arnold Schwarzenegger do State Farm commercials with riffs on Predator and Terminator. That was it. That was the joy of the episode. Nothing in this show is set up. They they want to try to inject all of these plot twists and oh, didn't see that one. But nothing is set up to where anything has any gravity whatsoever. Wait a minute. It Wait a minute. So Diane, are, bad. You, are you telling me that good twin yeah, this. and yeah, this Dwight Schrute Chitara that this didn't this didn't really get you just titillated as to how this might go, the romance, the this budding is stupid. romance. I will say this. The thing I find the most offensive about this whole show is quite honestly the piss poor cinematography in this. Mm -hmm. And I mean piss poor. I have never been so upset watching every moment in this show from a writing, acting, delivery standpoint is missed. It's just whiffed. Everything is a strike. I mean, it's terrible. And when you get to the part finally At the culmination of the halfway point of this show, at the end of episode four, when we get a reveal of the big bad, and all we get is a lazy ass medium shot walking up in this stupid mask, uh, and that's it. I'm, I'm sitting there thinking after we had a shot of this figure lowering in the background out of focus in the in the trees i'm like okay okay i like this we've got a forward focus it's on osha we see this figure coming down behind her out of focus in the trees and then it just cuts to this boring shot of this figure walking up that is no taller than osha there should have been at least a half a dozen if not a dozen different cinematic cut shots in there have that figure walking out we're supposed to be terrified of this figure this is the big bad this is the sith lord right we should have had a shot coming out of the shadows with a side light maybe at at a 75 degree angle coming down glinting off that silver work on the mask the blood or the red on the mask something that would cut back and forth cut down to the steps of the feet on the forest floor Come back up, slow reveal, slowly reveal this, and then give us something. But this was a dead, nothing, medium shot. This was terrible. This was just awful. And this is a show that didn't have the budget of a CW show, but by God, it sure as hell looked like one. $200 million for this dog trash. Mm-hmm. I mean, oh come on, Brenda look at that. Writing That's, out for a second. Look at that face. That's a face that you. I mean, fifty million can't pay for the joy that face gives you. Look at little this. This, this show is so bad that not only is the writing bad, the acting is bad. Everybody's a plank of wood, except maybe in in some cases. And look, all due respect to Lee Jung Jae working with what he was given for this show. The man can't speak a word of English, and he's delivering it orders of magnitude harder than everybody else consistently i don't know how but the man is is <laughs> damn good give him credit for that but visually this show is offensive visually think- this show is lazy it is just lazy and i i don't know if it's the issue of the cinematographers don't know what they're doing or if this is what they were just told to do because hey we don't want to spend the money actually filming it we just wanted to spend 50 million dollars building these cheap looking sets and props because that's what they did right that was the last financial return for blue stockings limited in the uk ended 10 days before cameras started rolling and they had already spent 50 million dollars that was renting shinfield studios leasing the space building the sets inside the sound stage building the sets outside the sound stage on an exterior back lot building props costumes getting the script done booking the actors and everything else probably 10 million dollars of that if i know disney was based in five star hotels in downtown london and a five million dollar catering bill this is where they piss money away but no we can't actually get quality 
And what really drives me nuts is two nights ago, I watched the season premiere of House of the Dragon, which, strangely enough, also cost about $20 million an episode. And look at that. Look at that. Look at what mm -hmm. $20 million gets you over at Warner Brothers with a Game of Thrones prequel versus this, pardon my French, sh that was a highlight from a special after-party edition of The Pro Show that will be hosting reactions immediately following the premiere of every episode of The Acolyte, so be sure to subscribe so you don't miss out on all the fun. But what about you? Are you even watching The Acolyte at this point? And if you are, what do you think of this episode? Such as aspects like the story, if we can even call it that, the writing, the dialogue, the cinematography, and pronouns being officially included in the Star Wars universe. Please let us know in the comments below, like this video if you did like this video, share us out as it helps us out tremendously against the YouTube algorithm, and thank you so much for watching. T3, P.O. Please comment, like, and share this video, and don't forget to subscribe to That Park Place Podcasts Online, your source for exclusive content and highlights from WDW Pro, The Pro Show, and That Park Place, for all the news that should be fun.